Oscar Munoz is used to managing turbulence. When he took over as chief executive of United, the airline was struggling after its 2010 merger with Continental. The two cultures had failed to come together, and passengers complained about long lines and poor service. All good relationships are built on trust. We know that, and we know that we have to earn yours. The new United ranked last by J.D. Power amongst major U.S. carriers in customer satisfaction. And his predecessor was forced out amid a federal investigation into his dealings with the head of New York's airport authority, although he was never charged. Then, just over a month into Oscar's tenure, he found himself in hospital. The reports are from the Wall Street Journal. It was the result of a heart attack. How close to death were you? I'll explain it this way. To this day, when I go in for checkups at Northwestern Hospital in Chicago, there's always somebody there that was there the day I arrived. People will come up and just hug you and hold you for an inordinate amount of time. And I always know what it means because people that are seasoned and nurses that have been there say, we've seen people come and go. We've never seen someone come in as serious as you were and still make it out. But I'm impressed at the speed with which you get back to work, even after you've had the first uh, heart treatment and then you have the heart transplant. Were you surprised? I was not at all, actually. I think the support from my United family, the letters and flowers and food that poured in every day, that my kids would bring to the hospital and literally read every morning from a bag of the mail gave me the understanding and confirmation that the people I had just been asked to lead just a few, you know, a month and a half before uh, were the real deal. The most damaging incident during Oscar's tenure was in April 2017, when Dr. David Dow was violently dragged off a United flight to make room for commuting crew members. The incident was captured on cell phone video, sparking outrage. Oscar faced criticism for his tepid initial response. Later, though, he realized his mistake. He issued a full apology and mea culpa. When United settled with Dr. Dow, it was for an undisclosed sum. Dow's lawyers even praised Oscar for taking responsibility when they put out their announcement. It's common today to spin and move and create divide and create headlines that service that. Again, my, my maternal grandmother was a great inspiration for me and I never saw her complain. I certainly never saw her blame anyone else. And I think the lesson uh, in that section of the book is at the end of the day, I had to own the whole thing. Did your internal people say, don't say that, don't <laughs> say that, Oscar? No. Um, there was a, a funny story I tell, the, the audible gasp both from the, the producers and my interviewer's ear and my team sitting behind me. It's like, wait, he's not supposed to say that. Uh, I think I find now, now amusing. But again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's never too late to do the right thing, is what I always like to say, uh, because it was, it was broken. It had gone out there. The, the hole was dug. There was no getting out of it. And it was just the practical thing to do, but also the right thing to do. We screwed up. I screwed up on what I said. I, I didn't handle it well. So let's own it tell them how we're gonna fix it, and then let's move on. And knowing that I can repeat exactly the words I said, you know, eight years later is an important part of me. So let's turn to United. Sure. It was a basket case. But you turned it round, and I know you didn't turn it round single-handedly, but what was the core that you did? In a turnaround situation, a mess, as you uh, determine it, um, what I've learned over my many years of work experience is that in a turnaround situation, there are many things that are broken. Which one you begin with first that you use as a platform for the subsequent changes that are there is very critical. And no shortages of things that people wanted me to do. And my instinct, based on a little bit of my heritage and background and things that I've experienced before, was to, uh, I could see and feel when I, when I met our employees that there was some level of, of disconnect there. So I, I felt the need to go out and to listen and learn from them before I led, led us into the next chapter. There's one area we have to talk about, of course, um, finally, which is your, your background. Yes, yes. And um, how, you are the classic. I mean, you are the poster, boy, in a sense, for immigrant into the United States under difficult circumstances who made it here to the very top. How concerned are you now of what you see with the, the issues of immigration. And, that's not, and it's not just immigration. It's, it's a combination of all the big social issues that befall us. We have grown into a country. There, there's a saying I learned a long time ago 
it was the head of a movie, but it said all great civilizations first implode from within. And even as a young child, that I, I, I just, for some reason, it hit me. And I, and I fear that we're doing the same thing in these great states of you know, America, because um, every, every issue is politicized and polarized. And, and my solution, and this always sounds like I'm running for office, but I'm not, is we, we have to jointly decide that we want to not only come together, but move forward. And we don't want it. We stay in our opposite end and fight like hell with very loose facts in a lot of times, and we don't make a progress. So whether it's immigration or women's rights, et cetera. Why aren't you running for office? <laughs> not will you, because you said, you said no several times. The, the more important question is, why aren't you? I mean, what is your next thing? I've had in my life, back to a long, long time ago, you know, certain parties, the powers that be, kingmakers who approach you to have a dinner and, and start suggesting that. And I've always uh, avoided it only from the standpoint, again, that I think my style can actually work better from, from the, the, the private sector. But again, you never say never.